Hey everyone and welcome to our super middleweight sport bike shootout where we've got the Ducati 899 Panigale, Suzuki GSX-R750, and the MV Agusta F3800. Today we're going to go on the street romp around. Kevin, why don't you give us a little bit on the Ducati? Yeah, it's brand new for this year. 899 Panigale, junior brother to the 1199 Panigale. And uh, it's got a, the biggest engine of the bunch and lots of uh, electronics that uh, actually I think we we're fine with. They actually work. We kind of like these electronics. Good LCD dash and uh, quite a bit cheaper than its big brother Panigale. And Tom, you got the MV over there. Tell us more about that. Well, Troy, also a brand new model for this year from MV Agusta, the F3 800. We have tested its uh, naked brother, the Brutale, but this is the full fared version. And, you know, not to tip this shootout in any favor, you know, of one bike or another, but what we can say right out of the gate is something we have been unable to say so far about MV Agusta is they finally have an electronics package that works well. And I'm talking about the throttle and the fueling issues. You know, we're out on the track, this thing is pulling hard. It's going through the range, it's not, you know, giving us a lot of sputter. Outside of that, um, we know that this bike is a wonderful handling motorcycle, uh, very light on its feet, transitions incredibly quick, and, you know, obviously a very good looking motorcycle. It's the only one here with a single sided swing arm. The Ducati lost that when they went down to the 899. Before we get any further, we should probably introduce the OG in this bunch, the original gangster, Suzuki. GSX-R 750. For a while it's been sitting by itself with no competition when all the other 750s kind of disappeared and uh, thank you Suzuki for keeping this bike in the lineup. Hasn't changed much uh, in the past couple of years. It's been the same old bike, 750 four-cylinder engine whereas the Ducati is a twin as you'd expect and the triple of the MV. So we've got some disparity here with the engines. Uh, really low-tech bike compared to speaking with the Suzuki and the Ducati MV. The Suzuki's got ride modes and uh, about it. So talking about the OG, the Jitcher 750, that was the Superbike class spec, 750cc four cylinders and up to 1000cc V-twins. Jitcher's still around, the Ducati's grown to 1200ccs, but here we got an 899cc, which is kind of like the original Ducati Superbike, which started out as an 851 and 888 for racing. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of an invigoration of the old class. While the leader bikes have gotten faster and heavier and more expensive, Here's something that's kind of in between the 600s and the big bikes. And it's something I think we found at the track yesterday. We've ridden at Chuckwalla many times on various size motorcycles, you know, from leader bikes to 600s. And man, what a nice in-between factor these guys are. I mean, fast enough to keep things exciting, but not, you know, leader bike size where you're just throwing your brains to the back of your head and worrying about your braking marker and stuff like that. I mean, you know, these are a thrill to ride. They're faster than the 600s, you know, they, they keep things exciting, but again, it's not overwhelming. And I think we all had a really good time yesterday. For a racetrack setting for track day, guys, any of these three would be really fun bikes. Yeah, the track, the Ducati, it's got plenty of power, but uh, what was surprising to us for the biggest displacement bike is that its power band is really narrow. If you want to get the maximum thrust, you really got to keep it spun up, which just sounds counterintuitive for a V-twin with the largest displacement. But in a corner, this thing is super stable and secure. It feels great once you're banked into a corner. Uh, the quickness around getting around the track uh, it seems to be like really close between all these three, despite their vastly different engine configurations. So in contrast to the Ducati, the Suzuki here has a really broad spread of power from the 750 engine and that uh, really makes it easy to go around the racetrack at Chuckwalla in a couple of gears, maybe second and third. The Gixxer, even though it doesn't have the electronics of the other one, when uh, we put uh, our photographer on the shoot, Evans Brassfield, on the bike, we put him first on the Gixxer because it's just so easy to get going fast on. The other ones take a little bit of uh, getting used to. But the Jixxer is just old, reliable, and it's still very quick. I think right now I, we should go for a ride on the street and uh, have some fun.
right, these bikes are sort of in the same class, but they're so different. A, a V-twin, a four-cylinder, a three-cylinder, different levels of electronics. The GSXR 12,500, it's by far the least amount of money of this group. And it's amazing how competitive it is against these higher end Italian bikes on either side. On the racetrack, very competent. I don't know if it was the, the fastest bike around the track, but it was maybe the easiest one to ride quickly before you get to the finer levels of speed. On the street, got a pretty comfy seat, decent riding position. You have adjustable foot pegs, can uh, change up the, the riding position for your legs. And uh, it's just a really competent tool. It's a really good bike, but in terms of how cool it makes you feel, I think the Italians have an edge. Tom, how about that MV? You were liking that today. Uh, yeah, Kev, I mean, some of my complaints of the motorcycle on the track, you know, it's nervousness, it's a little bit, you know, wild front end, and they sort of fall by the wayside when you're riding on the street. You're not riding it as aggressively, and a lot of those antics then become fun. Right, I mean, you're just accelerating, the front wheel's coming up. Uh, you know, it's got a little bit shorter gearing, so it gives you that rush of acceleration. Well, I was gonna say that the electronics packages that these two have, and then when it comes down to it, you know, I wasn't real happy with the Ducati's um, engine braking, whereas I preferred the engine braking on here. But uh, again, with the slipper clutch, I mean, for the Suzuki, it has that, you can ride really fast, smack some downshifts, uh, the only problem is when it gets into traction control, right? You've got to be a little bit more, you know, uh, easy on the throttle, a little bit more experienced because, you know, whereas we were coming out of some of the turns yesterday, you know, you can just get it on pretty much with the throttle, especially on the Ducati. The Suzuki, there's a couple of times that rear end starts slipping out and you're like, oh yeah, you know, I don't have that technology on this bike. So, you know, the MV has a beat in that regard, but for a lot more money. So I like a bike that's more stable with no antics and no surprises. I mean, I had fun riding the MV on the street. It's a lot of fun, uh, but same thing at the track. It just gets me tired faster. One thing we you know haven't mentioned so far in terms of its nervousness, no, is that you know a simple, uh, relatively affordable fix would be a steering damper, which this bike does not come equipped with from the factory. But to, you know, kind of quell that nervousness, I think would go a long ways into making this bike you know a little bit more user friendly. Yeah, I can't fault the Suzuki either. It does nothing wrong in my opinion. It's just these other two bikes in this test have a bit more of an excitement factor to them. And then when I get to this Ducati. There are things that I like on the track, like these wide handlebars I love at the racetrack because it gives you great leverage. The thing about the Ducati I don't like as much on the street as I did on the racetrack was the engine, which is weird because I love revving the crap out of this engine on the track, but on the street you really have to rev it out. And that's not exactly the most uh, convenient thing to do when you're riding on the street. Definitely, and these two bikes have a steering damper as standard equipment. And speaking of equipment, the all should be noted too, the Ducati has anti-lock brakes as part of the package, whereas you cannot get them on the Gixxer and you've got a few more months to wait before you can get it on the MV. So yeah, the MV, definitely a really fun bike, but in terms of a street bike usability, um, not as good a view out the mirrors as these other bikes, and it's got the hardest seat too. But really, all these bikes are fun, machines and really competent and very disparate but very closely matched with each other. In fact, they're so close together we got to go to our scorecards to really pick the absolute winner. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go to Motorcycle.com and if you're watching this video on Motorcycle.com, make sure you get to the bottom of the page.